Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be doing some acceleration testing on my Acura Integra before and after installing a catback exhaust. So uh, before getting started with this there are three videos that you may want to check out. First of all you may want to check out my video on weight removal testing where I removed weight from my Integra and then I did some acceleration testing to see the difference before and after removing that weight. Um, and in this video I go into a great detail of what I actually do during this test, how I set up this test, and what variables are eliminated in my acceleration testing. The other two you may want to check out include uh, the installation of the catback exhaust as well as uh, just how catback exhaust works, what their purpose is, uh, why do they exist, um, and I've got a video on that. So I'll include links of course to uh, check out each of those uh, which you may want to do before watching this. So let's jump into it. Uh, one of the things that people uh, commented on on my acceleration testing was uh, you didn't account for wind because uh, you, you didn't mention it in your variables. And I didn't mention it um, mainly because there really wasn't any wind when I was doing the testing, but what I did do was I had my second and my third gear uh, pulls were in opposite directions on the same road. So really uh, if there's a huge difference in acceleration from one to the other it's kind of telling that hey you know you're on a really steep uh, incline, either the incline is different or uh, the, the wind was significant. And in my acceleration testing they were pretty much dead even uh, both directions. It was like 4.3 percent difference versus 4.35 or something like that. So uh, I did account for wind, I just didn't really mention it in the video because it was kind of irrelevant. Um, and then I've also incorporated a new test uh, in this video where I'm simply timing uh, in first gear how long it takes for the engine to get from 2000 to 6000 RPM while in first gear. So an acceleration test um, and kind of going across the whole rev range uh, there. So I'll talk about that one as well. So let's jump in and watch the video on the second gear testing. So this is going to be second gear stock and second gear with the catback exhaust accelerating from 20 miles an hour to 40 miles an hour. So as you can see there, there actually was an improvement from the stock to the catback exhaust. Uh, the average time for the catback exhaust being 2.978 seconds, uh, accelerating from 20 to 40 versus 3.056 for uh, the stock uh, exhaust. So the percent difference of 2.578%. Now I went ahead and added another column here, and this is I called second best, and this is the best run of the three um, if you combine the best of each segment and determine uh, basically what the percent difference is. So for the stock exhaust the best time was a 3.033 for the catback the best time was a 2.933 so that gives a 3.35 percent which is a little bit higher than this so conservatively I'd just go with the lower number to say that's you know going to be a realistic one but it could be possible that you know the, the best you could possibly get could be up to three percent for second gear. So this was across kind of a higher RPM rev range. Now let's take a look at the third gear acceleration testing uh, before and after installing a cutback exhaust. So as you can see from the results there, the stock exhaust was actually quicker than after installing the catback, even though the catback is also 10 pounds lighter. So we've got uh, 4.622 for the stock versus 4.656 for accelerating in third gear from 20 to 40 miles an hour, a difference of negative 0.72%, so negative 0.27% uh, decrease in acceleration. And then if we look at the best time, we also get the same thing, uh, 4.6 versus 4.633, giving us a 0.72 uh, decrease percentage in uh, acceleration. So, um, this kind of makes sense to me, you know, this is across a lower RPM range, 
and it makes sense that the, the designers would design an exhaust for the car that would be ideal for a lower RPM range um, and, and a lower speed so the car is more efficient because you know most people aren't going to be in the higher rev range for the duration of their driving experience. Uh, most people aren't racing so they're not keeping it up in those high RPMs versus uh, the average commuter which is going to be keeping it in low RPMs um, and you're going to want your efficiency to be at that point. So it makes a lot of sense that this is what we see and it's kind of cool to actually see it pan out that way. Alright, so now let's look to the first gear acceleration testing from 2000 to 6000 RPM with both the stock and the catback exhaust. So we saw there, there actually was an uh, increase in the acceleration for the catback exhaust, 2.20 average time for stock versus 2.13 for the catback, giving a 3.08%. And if we take a look at the best run possible for the stock versus the best run possible for the catback, we've got a 1.55%. So the stock did have a good run in there, um, and so it kind of tells you that you know your, your worst case may be around about a 1.55% increase and acceleration. Now an interesting thing that I did, so I kind of broke it down by uh, RPM range, so I took the time it took to go from 2000 to 3000, and then from 3000 to 4000, 4000 to 5000, 5000 to 6000, and I looked at each one of those times, and I looked at the best possible time for each one of those. And the best time for stock versus uh, after installing the catback was exactly equal for 2000 to 3000 RPM. Same with 3004 and 4 to 5. The only improvement that there was was from 5000 to 6000 RPM. And this is when just looking at the best time, uh, and that was an improvement of 6.5%. So a big increase in the acceleration uh, at the very end um, in these higher RPMs when you've got a lot of exhaust flowing through that uh, catback. Now, this is a bit high. I don't really expect it the actual improvement to be 6.5%. Uh, my frame rate was fairly low, only 30 frames per second, so that's definitely something I need to tweak in the future. But um, it basically tells you that both exhausts are fairly equal, then you get into this higher RPM range, and you start to take advantage of that higher flow exhaust. So, conclusions. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was that with the catback exhaust, uh, the testing was actually done with warmer temperatures and a higher humidity. So I would expect this to have a negative effect um, it was actually 4% higher humidity and a 2.2% uh, Celsius warmer uh, with the catback exhaust. So I would expect the catback times to be a little bit slower than they could have been had it been cooler, less humid air. Uh, the other thing we've got is um, I'd say the catback exhaust is giving about a 2% increase in acceleration. That's being fairly conservative. We've got 2.58 here, 3.35 here, but then we have this 1.55 here. So the ultimate conservative answer would maybe be 1.55% improvement in acceleration, but I'm just going to kind of say 2% because we have these other tests which show that it can indeed be higher. Um, so overall, we've got a 6%, a little bit greater than 6% increase in acceleration when we tack the gains from this onto the gains from removing the 84 pounds, uh, which I had in my other video. So the Project Integra is on its way to a faster car, 6% quicker already. Um, and then the other conclusion was this catback is 10 pounds lighter. So that's uh, always, of course, a, a positive gain, all kinds of benefits from removing weight from a car. So, lessons learned. What did I learn from this testing and how can I improve my future testing? Well, I need to use a higher frame rate. Um, for the first gear testing, it was very challenging to kind of break this down with only 30 frames per second. So I'd like to use either 60 or 120 frames per second for the next uh, testing that I do. Um, it also would probably be useful to do second gear to the higher RPM rather than first gear because the first gear is just so short and so quick. So it would be easier to tell uh, the acceleration differences using second gear. Finally, uh, it would of course be helpful to do a dyno test uh, and actually look at the curve, the horsepower curve, and see where it changes. See how at the higher RPM uh, you gain more than at the lower RPM. The reason I didn't do this is basically just time and cost. Um, this is a very simple way of doing it, and it worked very well for the acceleration testing when I removed weight. 
So I tried it again. Um, results weren't quite as accurate, but still pretty good. And I think with a higher frame rate, I can make it actually work pretty well. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.